Hey, welcome. We haven't met yet. You must be new in town. I'm Andy. Was. Was with them. That was back when my arm and leg used to work better. I still like to pretend I'm a ranger, though. I'll check in with the guys up at the station pretty regular on the ham radio. Sometimes they stop by, tell me they're paying their respects, the smug bastards. They haven't been responding to me last couple days. I guess they got tired of hearing me talk, but it still got me a little worried. Hell, listen to me talk, like some damn mother hen. What? What happened? God damn it! I just spoke to them the other day. If this is some kind of sick joke, nah, that'd be too far, even for those guys. Listen, this could be trouble for all of us. Whoever did this is still out there, and they might come this way. If you can find out who did this, we can be better prepared to deal with them if they come through here. Yeah, twice. Actually, the first time, it was more like half my body. Knocked me out of the Rangers. This time, it's mostly just reminded me how useless I've gotten. A few years back, we get a tip that some Legion slavers were holed up in this burnout house a few clicks from where we were stationed. We get there and it's deserted. No sign anyone's been there. I mean, nothing. As we're leaving, I hear something behind me. I turn around and there's this kid, just skin and bone, and he's looking up at us and he's scared half to death. Been hiding in a closet. I go to grab him out of there and I notice he's holding something in his hand. Something metal. He shuts himself back in the closet and that's when I see the grenade he's left by my feet. They do it a lot, the Legion, using kids. They know we'll hesitate. Anyway, that was the first time. Second time, I fell down those stairs in front of the motel. Just in case I got to thinking I'd put it all behind me. Huh. <laughs> People don't exactly line up to find out what's in my head. Can't remember the last time someone suggested I knew something worth knowing. You know, maybe there's something I can do for you. Since you've gone to all the trouble of flattering a crippled old soldier, there's a move we have in the Rangers for knocking an opponent off his feet. Save my butt a bunch of times, maybe it will for you too. Let me show you how it's done. I can't believe we were allowed inside the Lucky 38. That place has been a legend since before the war. Sure, boss. Hey, boss. Can I ask you something? What do you think of guys like Ranger Andy? That wasn't what I meant, really. I mean, guys who have a world of experience doing what they do, but have to give it up because they're getting old and slow, or too injured. Maybe, yeah, I guess you got a point there. Not really, boss, no. I grew up in a place called Hidalgo Ranch, just outside Mexico City. It wasn't much, just a bit of a farm, with a house for three generations of Tejadas. I wasn't the best behaved kid. I was quick with my hands, with a pistol or a wrench. And I wasn't afraid to get into fights over it. I never killed anybody, but I had my share of run-ins with the police. Mostly my family kept me in line. This was before the war. We were far enough away from Mexico City when the bombs fell that we missed the worst of it. But things got bad quick. Just a few days after Mexico City was vaporized, refugees started pouring down the road to our ranch. We helped who we could, but there were so many. Eventually, my father started turning people away before we ran out of food. Things got violent. My father and I got our guns, and we drove them off. About two dozen men came back in the night after we'd gone to sleep. They set fire to the ranch house and barred the doors from the outside. My whole family was trapped inside. I smelt the smoke. And I got myself 
and my little sister Rafaela out through a window. But everyone else, my parents, my grandmother, my two brothers, and two of my sisters, all died. Rafaela and I ran. We were pursued by some of the men who attacked our home. But I was always a good shot. The ones who came after us, I killed. The rest, I left be. I had to take care of Rafaela, not throw my life away on revenge. I know that, boss. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm just getting sentimental in my old age. Anyways, forget it. Just wanted that off my chest. Isn't that bomber a beauty? Thanks so much for making an old man's dreams come true. No, those aren't for outsiders to use. Leave them alone. Anything else you need? I've got work to do. If that's so, how about you look into repairing the solar arrays on the roof of the generator building? Nothing too complicated about it, but it's a long ways to walk my old bones, and there's been that ant problem over near there. You can't miss the array. It's on top of the generator building smack dab in the middle of Nellis between the two runways. <laughs> if we need something obliterated, Raquel and the Howitzer crews are more than qualified. No, we have more specialized issues we need help with right now. Are you talking about that damn bright light we've seen blast off to the south occasionally? I was wondering what the hell that was. If they've got the parts, bring them on back. 
We need to get the array back up and charging. Be sure to stop on back and let me know when the arrays are fixed. That's a good thing to see, huh, boss? That loyal guy. He's getting up there in years, but he still finds a way to make himself useful to his people. If you ask me, that's better than withering away all alone or holding on to some faded piece of glory from your past. Yeah? That's what I thought, too. Old history, boss. After the fire, I knew my sister and I couldn't stay at Hidalgo Ranch anymore. The refugees still wanted me dead. They even put a bounty on me. I remember how scared Rafaela was. I told her if she came with me, we'd see the vaqueros. She used to love the rodeo, especially the trick rider. We figured maybe we could find help in Mexico City. We were young. We didn't know what had happened, really. We didn't understand about the bombs. I don't think it was as hard hit as D.C. or Bakersfield. But it was bad enough. By the time we got there, the city was a radioactive ruin. Still, the city was full of looters already forming into the beginnings of raider tribes. Crime was bad before the war, but now it was a nightmare. We were living like scavengers, scraping by on what little food we could find always looking for medicine for my burns. And then, of course, the radiation started to kick in, turning me into this handsome devil you see before you. You're a poet of understatement, boss. But there were moments it was almost worth it. I still remember finding that novelty costume shop. I was just looking around for something I could slice up to wrap my burns when I saw the vaquero outfit hanging on the rack like it hadn't been touched. I took it, not like anybody else needed it, you know? And wore it back to our camp. Rafaela laughed. For the first time since the bombs had fallen. It was. I started to build up a legend. Sometimes it headed off trouble. But most of the times it just started more. Young punks looking to prove themselves would come looking for me. But my eyes were sharp and my guns were quick. For a while, it seemed like we might even survive there. Until... Until Rafaela. She went out to find some food one day. I was sick, so I stayed at her camp. I guess it must have been the beginning of radiation poisoning. Anyway, it was supposed to be safe. But some raiders happened to pass through where she was scavenging. I won't speak of what they did to her. When I found her body, the only way to recognize her was this funny little scar on her knee from when she was a little girl. Terrible doesn't begin to cover it, boss. I let my whole family down. First the ranch, now Rafaela. I was the last Tejada. I guess maybe I went a little crazy then. I took my guns and went back to that market. I didn't have many bullets, but I had enough. After the raiders were dead, I salvaged what I could from the store. I was tired. I just wanted to be alone forever. I left Mexico City behind. I made my way out to the Gulf Coast. Eventually, I found an old Petro Chico refinery nobody had claimed. I stayed there for a little while, and I thought a lot about my life. I thought about the guns I'd lived by and what they'd gotten me. I decided my guns hadn't gotten me anything. And it was time to give it up. I took off the old vaquero outfit and put on a Petro Chico jumpsuit. The name tag said Miguel. So I started using the name myself. Eventually I made it to Arizona. That's another story, boss.
Sorry, no time to talk outside. Isn't that bomber a beauty? Thanks so much for making an old man's dreams come true. An impressive piece of work. I'll keep that in mind if jobs come up in the future. Bye. Name Sterling, first recon. Can't say I've seen you before. I'd remember if I had. Got a good memory for faces, landmarks and such too. Comes with practice, that's all. And a lot of scouting from place to place. Used to be a ranger. One of the first they sent out east back before we took the dam. Observation and reconnaissance. We took the lay of the land, checked out the locals, and kept ourselves inconspicuous. A couple friends of mine were the first to scout the dam. That was back in 73, if I recall. A lot of those rangers are dead now. Vegas always chewed men up. It's just a little more literal nowadays. Well, that wasn't really a matter of choice. Got myself caught by legionaries up near Malpe. They had themselves some fun with me. Mangled my hands and feet pretty good. Wasn't much good with the pistol after that. Wasn't gonna be trekking across the waist on any more long scouts either. Caesar's boys figured I wasn't going anywhere after what they'd done to me. So they didn't bother tying me up. I crawled out of there on my elbows and knees. Must have looked a sight. Then I rolled down an embankment into the Colorado. I guess I had a mind to drown rather than give Caesar's boys the satisfaction of killing me. But a couple rangers happened to be watching from across the river. They jumped on in and pulled me out of there. Lucky break, they said. I call her La Long Carabine. Didn't always have the scope. I added that myself. Been shooting with her so long, couldn't bring myself to toss her away. Would have felt guilty to part with the old girl. The other snipers used bolt action, but Gore Betts reckoned it didn't matter none if I was different, so long as I could hit my targets. Always a pleasure. Keep yourself safe. Hey, what did Chief Hanlon have to say about those false reports we uncovered? Wait, what? Why would he do that? The Chief should have known that the NCR is too stubborn to back down from anything, even when it's for the best. While I'm glad it wasn't an enemy who was spreading lies and killing morale, I'm disappointed that a legend like the Chief felt he had to do it. Got a second to talk, boss. Meeting Corporal Sterling, well, it kind of got me thinking. Here's a guy that's been beat all to hell, right? I mean, he could have retired from the service, but instead he signs back on and does what he can. You think he did the right thing? You think so, boss? Because I remember a time when a lot of people stuck to their duty no matter what. It ended with nuclear bombs falling on my hometown. I left everything when I left Mexico. My home, my family, my name, even my face. I know it's surprising, boss, but I wasn't always this handsome. As far as the world knows, I was Miguel. 
and I was okay with that. I headed north for a while, and ended up in Tucson. Not Tucson, by the way. Things were good there. Well, maybe not good, but better than Mexico City, anyway. I found myself a little shack and started fixing things. Oh, sure, boss. I was always good at fixing things. Some I fixed for the town, some I fixed for other people, some I fixed just for the hell of it. It's a better way to use your hands than killing. And even then, I wasn't getting any younger or faster. I lived there for a long time, kept to myself, didn't get into any fights. Hell, the only reason I even kept my guns oiled was professional pride. Getting there, boss, I'd been in Tucson. The locals can call it Tucson all they want, but it's Tucson, damn it. About 75 years when she showed up. Pretty thing you ever saw, boss. Maybe it was just a trick of my senile brain, but I swear she looked just like my Rafaela. Her name was Claudia. She ended up taking work at one of the brothels in town. I never went to her, of course. How could I? But I looked after her in my own way. This was a long time ago, before Caesar's Legion pacified Arizona and brought the Raider tribes to heel. A tribe came into Tucson one day. More a gang, really. Dirty Dave and his six brothers. They were looking for bullets, and I sold some to them. I figured if I did that, they'd leave town before they tore it up too much. No, boss. No, they didn't. As I was saying, I hope they'd leave the town in peace. Instead, they decided to stop at Claudia's brothel to take the edge off. I don't know which one of them got rowdy first, but by the time I heard the screams and got my guns, it was too late. They shot up the brothel, killed four girls, and taken Claudia for their sport. I went after Dave and his brothers. They had a head start, but they slept nights. I didn't. It took me three days to catch up to them. Claudia was dead when I got there. They put a bullet in each of her eyes. I couldn't do anything except avenge her, just like Rafaela. I charged into the middle of their camp and started firing. Two of them were dead before they knew I was there. The other five, though, they shot the shit out of me. I would have died, I think, if I wasn't so full of rage. By being a meaner old cuss than the rest of them, boss. I wanted to keep living until they weren't. So I just kept shooting until they were all dead. I was in pretty bad shape in the end, though. I don't know how long I laid there, with the sun baking me and the buzzers chomping at me. Eventually, I got the strength to start moving. Some long time after that, I managed to drag my carcass back to town. When I recovered, more or less, anyways. I left Tucson and headed west. I ran into Tabitha at Black Mountain, and well, the rest you know. I swore I was done with the gunslinging life. I was too old, too slow, and too beat up to protect anyone anymore. I thought I was done forever, but after traveling with you, I realized I've always had my doubts. About whether I still had what it took to carry my pistols proudly to use them to do what's right. And now that I've been traveling with you for a while, you made me realize that I could still do that. Maybe I'm not as tough as I used to be, but my brains can make up for that. And my hands are still quick enough. It's time to put the guns back on. I suppose you're right, boss. These balls are too old for that kind of action. <laughs>